Hello, my name is Alyssa Geetings and I've had the opportunity to represent Pella as the 2021 Tulip Queen. I could not be more excited to read you a story today about Center Class to celebrate Center Class Day. So let's begin. In the Center Class Bakery, it was very busy. More than 100 bakery helpers were busy putting things in order for Center Class's birthday. They had to make 10 million Dutch Spice cookies, 5 million gingerbread cubes, 15 million dolls of all sorts, and countless chocolate letters, almond paste letters, and other foods far too numerous to mention. The helpers worked day and night, just like they did every year. Center Class's helpers were used to it by now, but still, now and then, they needed an hour of rest because they could work no longer. Everywhere in the bakery, the huge kettles were bubbling and ovens were steaming, while other treats were cooling. Center Class himself was busy too. In his study, he was writing in the big book that contained all of the names of the children who would receive a present this year. In a smaller book, the names of the children who had been naughty were written. Fortunately, it only had a few names. And perhaps they too would get a small gift, because Center Claus was very sad when he could not give a gift to everyone. Somewhere in Center Claus's palace, a bell rang. Soon, a door to the workshop opened, and the smallest of Center Claus's helpers entered. Center Claus told the little helper that he wanted him to wanted him to do, to polish his ring. He asked the little helper if he had some polish, and the little helper said he had some back in the kitchen. Center Claus told the little helper to go and polish the ring and make it shine like the sun, but he also told the little helper to be careful because this was an important ring. If something happened to it, the helper would not be allowed to make the northern journey this year. The little helper swallowed hard. He carefully picked up the ring and went to the door. He knew that he was carrying the most precious object in the whole world. He walked through the halls of the palace and paid attention only to the ring that he was carrying. He turned corner after corner and finally stood in the entrance to the big bakery. He had to go through the bakery because the kitchen where he kept the polish was right behind it. Maybe he could have gone around the bakery, but the distance to the kitchen would have been so much longer. Still looking at the ring, the little helper entered the bakery where everyone was very busy. And because he was interested in only the ring, he did not notice that the other helpers were hard at work. And he didn't notice the little helper who was mixing dough for the center cloth cookies. If he had noticed, nothing would have happened. But just as he approached, the little helper turned with a huge bowl of dough and turned around. In his hand was a large wooden spoon. And as he turned, he struck the little helper, bang. The little helper stumbled forward and the worst thing that could happen, happened. The center cloth ring flew out of his hand and plop right into the kettle of dough. And of course, the large silver ring with the red ruby did not stay afloat. It sank very quickly and disappeared into the dough. It was gone. That was terrible, more than terrible. The center cloth ring, gone. The little helper stood trembling with fear. Huge tears started to roll down his che tre <laughs> cheeks and drop to the floor of the bakery. The bigger helper who was making the cookies got angry and yelled at the little helper. It's all your fault, what are we going to do now? The dough was ready to be put into the molds and in a huge kettle, the ring could never be found. Sinterklaas would never have it back again. The little, little helper knew that Sinterklaas would be very angry and began to cry more. The bigger helper thought for a minute and said, the ring does not melt. It might get warm, but it won't break. And then he had a brilliant idea. He would continue making the cookies and when they were all baked, the ring would be in one of them. Then he would call the other helpers that all were all together and they could eat all of the cookies until they found the one with the ring in it. We will not stop until they have all been eaten, said the big helper. The little helper asked how many cookies would be made out of the big kettle and the bigger helper replied, oh, about a thousand. The little helper was afraid that they could not eat that many cookies. What if it was in the very last one? But the bigger helper assured him that it might not be in the first one. The little helper began to cry again because he didn't even like those speculous cookies and didn't want to eat any. But the bigger helper said that he must eat too because after all, it was his fault that the ring was lost in the first place. The bigger helper grabbed the kettle of dough and went off to the ovens to bake the cookies. Soon they were all done and there were 30 baskets full of cookies to eat. The other helpers were all there and began to eat. They couldn't let Sinterklaas be without his ring. 
So they chewed and swallowed and they swallowed and chewed. They sighed and groaned as their stomachs grew and grew. They chewed and swallowed and swallowed and chewed. Only 16 baskets were emptied and still no rain to be found. As they ate and ate, their stomachs got bigger and bigger and they began to hurt. The helpers were rubbing their aching tummies and could eat no more. The big helper told them just to keep on eating and slowly six more baskets were emptied. Then, suddenly, one of the helpers jumped up and grabbed his cheek. He had found it. He spit out the rain and part of his tooth too. The little helper cried for joy. The rain had been found. He took the ring and flew to the kitchen to polish it while the other helpers moaned and groaned and held their aching tummies. They were so full they had to go to their rooms and lay down and rest. Finally, the little helper had the ring all polished and he placed it in a plastic bag to carry back to Sinterklaas. He had been very careful not to go through the bakery on the way his back. Instead, he went around through the garden. The little helper knocked at the door that of the study where Santa Claus was working. And on his face, he beamed when he saw the little helper taking the ring from his bag and placing it on the sleeve. Santa Claus chuckled as he saw the little helper give it one last polish with his shirt sleeve. Santa Claus took the ring and looked it over. He told the little helper that he had done a beautiful job. And for all of his hard work, Santa Claus reached into his drawer and gave the little helper a present, a Santa Claus cookie. Santa Claus never un did understand why the little helper suddenly became sick and dashed out of his study. The end. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you and your family at the base of the Vermeer One Mill this Saturday from 10 to 11 to receive a Santa Claus basket.